Hey guys, it's Matt. Starting off a different type of video today. I don't have a giant project to show you, but I'm starting off a new series called Logical Redstone Basics, where I'm just going to go over different aspects of logical redstone and show you how they work. So I'm going to talk about probably logic gates, encoders, decoders, binary, hexadecimal, all that stuff. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people have given me comments or DMs that they're confused and want to learn more about how my projects work. So I'm hoping that by watching this series, you'll learn a lot more about the logic that I use and uh, hopefully you'll be able to make some projects of yourself as well. And even if you're not super into Minecraft, I mean, all the stuff I'm showing in this series has resemblance to real life electronics. So like, I mean, it's really important. It's how computers work, it's how calculators work, and it's super cool stuff to get into. So I, I hope you enjoy. And today's video is just gonna be over logic gates. So we're gonna talk about four different types of logic gates. We've got OR, NOT, AND, and XOR. So to start, let's just talk about what a logic gate is. Logic gate takes inputs, which can be either zero or one. It does logic on them and it gives an output, which can also be zero or one. So the representation here is just, well, if these lamps are off, it's a zero. And if the lamp is on, it's a one. So this logic gate diagram is taking in two inputs. And right now they're both zero, zero because both the lamps are off and it's giving an output of zero because this lamp is off as well. If I flick one of these levers, now we're inputting one and zero and it's still outputting zero because this lamp is still off. Now the output of logic gates is not random or anything, it's completely logical. They all follow a truth table. And what a truth table is, lays out all the different combinations of your inputs on the left hand side, and then it lays out what the corresponding outputs are on the right side. So for example, with this specific truth table, if you input 0 and 0, it out outputs a 0. If you input a 1 and a 1, it outputs a 1. Now, this truth table in specific corresponds to what's called an OR gate. An OR gate is probably the most basic type of logic gate. It gives you an output when you have at least one input turned on. So as you can see, the only time it doesn't give an output is when you have both of them off. Otherwise, you've got at least one one coming in, and so you get a one coming out. And in Minecraft, we can resemble this with redstone really easily, because all you have to do is take two wires and connect them to each other. And now, as long as you have at least one of these lamps on, the output lamp will be on. In addition to truth tables, logic gates will always have a symbol that corresponds to them. So this is the universal symbol for an OR gate. You'll see it in schematics everywhere, in electronics and all that. And so you can use these two inputs, the black lines coming in, and it gives the output, which is the black line coming out. And since there's a million different ways to connect two different lines in Minecraft, you can make a million different types of OR gates. I just pulled out a few cases to show you. This one takes two vertical inputs and gives an output using this repeater to joint them. And as you can see, it still follows the truth table of an OR gate. This one over here is basically one line and then another line right next to it if you wanted to have them directly stackable. And so this repeater powers this block, which also hops onto this line of power. So if you've ever done circuitry in Minecraft where you connect lines together, you've already been doing logic without even knowing it. Let's move on to the second logic gate. It's called a NOT gate. It's extremely simple. It takes one input and one output. And this is the truth table. That's it. If it's a one, give me a zero. If it's a zero, give me a one. And in Minecraft, the representation is even simpler than an OR gate. You just use a torch. A torch is already a NOT gate. And just like OR gates, there's a million different ways to make them. As long as you have a torch, you have a knot gate. So I just pulled out a few of them to show some of their properties. Uh, this is just like five knot gates stacked together. And so each one is an individual gate here. Then over here, I'm showing that no matter where you put the torch along the line, it still functions the exact same. So you can put the torch right at the beginning and it's a knot gate, or you can put the torch right at the end and it functions the exact same way. And with this last example, I just wanted to show you a property of knot gates that I think is really important. So if you have two knot gates in a row, and I'll build one real quick, if you have a torch into another torch, which is two knot gates, it actually just acts as like a redstone repeater. It just continues the signal. Whatever's in the input goes into the output. But over here, if you have three knot gates in a row, then it actually acts as one giant knot gate. So we have off giving on and on giving off. And the cool thing is we can actually generalize this property. Anytime you have an even number of knot gates in a row, the product is going to be a repeater. The whole thing is just going to act like a repeater. But if you have an odd number of knot gates in a row, the product is just going to be one giant knot gate. The whole thing will act as if it's just one torch. Alrighty, simple gates out of the way. We've got OR and NOT. 
and don't forget those are the symbols for them. So now we're going to take those two gates and we're going to use them to create the next gate. This next gate is called an AND gate and this is what it looks like, this is its truth table. It only gives an output when both A and B are 1. And so we get a 1 when the inputs are 1, 1, otherwise we always get a 0. And if you want to see how it works right here, you only get an output when both of these are on. So anyways, you're going to use the NOT AND OR together to make an AND gate. And this is exactly how you're going to do it using this diagram. You start with the two inputs down here, both inputs get knotted, then both of those outputs get put into an OR, and then that final output gets knotted one more time. Now that might sound like a lot, but I promise it's extremely simple. In fact, this is it right here. So you have two inputs, they're both getting knotted with the torch going up, they're getting ORed with the redstone dust in the middle, and then they're getting knotted one more time with the final torch on the side of this block. And this functions as an AND gate. So this final output only goes off when you have both of these inputs on. If it still doesn't make sense exactly how this works right away, don't worry about it. I would honestly just stare at this until it does make sense. The way I always think about it is that, okay, this line is always going to stay on as long as at least one of these torches are on, right? So it takes the teamwork of both of the inputs to turn off these vertical torches, and then only when they finally use that teamwork will this final torch be allowed to turn on and give an output. That, that's how I think about it. Moving on to more designs, uh, this is like five inputs together. So this output only goes off when all five are on. And it's just what you'd expect. They all go into their individual knot, all the knots get ORed, and then that final OR gets knotted one more time. It takes the teamwork of all five of these repeaters to turn off the torches and to finally allow this OR torch to turn on. This one here is a really small vertical AND gate. Here's another pretty small design. We just have torches going straight up into a block, into a shared redstone dust, into another torch on the side. This last AND gate is a little bit special. Some people like to call it a subtraction AND gate, but it works the exact same way as all the others. Basically, if you didn't know, if you have a comparator in subtract mode, you can cancel the input by putting a full signal strength into its side. So right now, if I wanted to try to put something through it, I can't because it's being canceled by this input on the side. And so this functions as an AND gate because, well, you have the first input just trying to get through, but again, you have to use the teamwork of both inputs. You have to not only try to get the first input through, but you also have to allow it through, right? If we didn't have a signal in the first place, we don't get an output, or if we are just canceling it, then we also don't have an output. It takes teamwork. And again, it's okay if you don't fully understand this. I'm going to give this world as a world download in the description so you can try it out yourself. Just keep playing around with these AND gates, make some for yourself, and you'll get it. Last but not least, we've got an XOR gate. An XOR gate symbol is just an OR gate with like a, I don't know, a band on the front of it. And so its truth table looks like this. It's almost the exact same as an OR, but if you have two in at the same time, it actually doesn't allow it. So in other words, it only allows one at a time. That's why it's called exclusive OR. Uh, so the schematic for it down here, again, you can just use uh, knots and ORs, just like the AND gate, but we have a lot more of them this time. So we've got the two inputs, uh, the inputs get split into like a middle OR here, and also into some ORs up here. And yeah, I mean, you can follow it through. We've got four ORs in total and three knots in total, and this does give us the truth table that we want for an XOR. Thankfully, there are better ways to make an XOR than having all those ORs and all those knots. We can actually use comparators again. So these are two comparators on subtract mode, and this functions as an XOR gate. If you put one in, it goes, one in, it goes, but if you put both in, it gets cancelled. I think a lot of people just consider this type of XOR as like the holy grail of XORs, like it's so small, so fast, there's not really ever a reason to use something else, but of course we have a ton of different ways to do it. Um, I don't, I can't really summarize this very well, but again, you can download the map and try it out yourself if you want to see the inner workings of these torches and how they all combine to make an XOR gate. So as you can see, if you put two inputs in, it gets cancelled, but it allows in one at a time. Here we have another version. This version is relatively flat, so you can see all the logic that's going on. I think this version actually directly resembles the schematic over there, so that's pretty cool that you can do it in this small of a space. And then finally we have a vertical XOR gate using some repeaters and torch tricks. So one in at a time, fine, one in at a time, fine, both in, not allowed. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if you got any questions, you can always just join my Discord, ask me questions, ask other people questions. I think we all like to help. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.